And this issue of racist, structural racism in our contracting, in our jobs, and our transportation affects all of us. And we're working to go upstream on, also on the congressional side with the transportation authorization bill, working with Overstar's office in order to, make, to require the states to be accountable and to make sure that they have to spend this money, uh, some portion of all the transportation dollars, on minority contracting and DBEs. And there's a hearing next week. It's uh, five congressional districts are going to be represented there, multiracial. It's hearing on next Wednesday to talk about... Um, 20 seconds. Okay, thanks. Uh, it, I'm sorry, Monday, to make sure that we put all these folks in the room and we're going to be gathering testimony uh, from people who are affected by this issue. We're going to be asking our members of Congress to carry this and enter this in the congressional record and work with us on that transportation authorization bill. Let's go upstream. All right, all right. Edward Hodges, some of the cap. I, I just want to know what's being done to reduce the recidivism rate. And why is the time frame on expungement so uh, so long? Thank you. Good evening, I'm Jim Frisco. I'm the local president of the National Association of Minority Contractors, the Upper Midwest Group. My responsibility is to find work for our members. Uh, Bernie, a specific question. We were last aware that the DBE goal was 15%. The proposed new number has dropped it down, I believe, to 8%, almost a 50% decrease in that goal. Could you please expand on that, uh, the rationale for that change? Okay, we got, we've got five uh, people to put their input in. Why don't we hear from the panel for a minute, then we'll, uh, then we'll roll in. Education process as you rate. Now, MnDOT is one organization, but there's a certification process for Met Council, yeah. the University of Minnesota, you know, MAC, you name it. And when you think in terms of just the aggregate number of those who are, are not meeting their goals, that compounds this challenge. So we need to do something about how do we uh, uh, create a uniform certification process. The second thing that I think is important is that when you think in terms of contracts, and if you want to create opportunities for smaller businesses to participate, they can unbundle those contracts and create smaller contracts, therefore the bond of responsibility and the ability for people to get those jobs would definitely happen and that would be uh, something that could happen. Now when we think in terms of partnering opportunities, I know that there's a construction partnering program uh, through MEDA, there's some other initiatives. I know Richard has uh, joint ventured with a number of larger primes. So there are those things that are happening, but the main issue from my vantage point is that there has to be the will and the willingness for these major governmental entities to recognize that they need to include and find ways to include in real ways and in real time. Some of those questions that came out. One is, do we partner minorities with larger contractors? Yes, our, one of the uh, most important projects that have come out of this collaborative is to enhance our mentor protege uh, program, and they've been working hard to build these relationships, not only uh, through the mentor protege, but through some of the meet and greets, and allowing these folks to get to know each other so that they can work better together. Another question came up about our media strategy, and in fact, in the next day or two, you're going to see a whole uh, group of ads that's going to go out talking about Help Wanted, uh, minority and women-owned businesses. We've got a whole bunch of different uh, uh, announcements that are going to go out in, in well, some of the papers that will go out is Insight and the Spokesman Recorder. There will also be going out in Asian, Asian publications, uh, Hispanic publications, and American Indian publications. And we've got a whole program of these ads that are going out. As I said, I think you'll be seeing them in a day or two. Um, the, the next one, I think, was that uh, the DBE goal. And in fact, that is correct, or at least close, the, the uh, goal that we had set for this year was 15.3%. That was based on the NERA study. That NERA study has been, a, there's been some shortcomings that have been identified, and it has to do with available and uh, DBEs that are able to bid on these projects. And so we, we brought together three uh, uh, different factors, and i got to tell you, I'm, I'm blanking on, on a couple of them right now, but I'd be happy get you that too, and we had it in our public notice in that. But we, what we are trying to do here is develop a more reasonable goal. 
And, um, you know, I knew that when we set that 15.3% goal, it was going to be very difficult to achieve. We had to deal with it with Federal Highway. What, you, what, what I'd like you to, to recognize is that what we do is for every job that is led at MnDOT uh, with federal dollars, we look at what work types are in that job. And then we look at available DBE contractors and set that goal based on those available contractors. And so that, that overall goal that we have is, is, is not really achievable at 15.3% when we look at each of these different work types. And we're trying to create a more realistic goal that we can grow as we grow DBEs and uh, train workforce. Hey, everybody. Um, obviously, uh, we need to hear from our panel, but I got to get through a whole side of this room. And I just want to do a time check. We got about 35 more minutes to do that. So, the more economical your comments can be, the better. Thank you. Okay, I'd like to just quickly say that, uh, Bernie, are there. Last year, it was 15.3% DBE inclusion. MnDOT is proposing a 10% inclusion for 2010, and that's what the public hearing indicated. So they're gonna, they want to drop the DBE percentage another 5%. The nearest study uh, indicated that if there was no discrimination, that women and minorities would be included in our marketplace at a rate of 23%. So they brought, so MnDOT already brought the lowered the bar to 15.3%. Yes, there are some problems in which the, in the way in which uh, everything is calculated, but there are some skewed things. Now, for example, a company like my own, Meyer Contracting, I don't bid a lot of work to MnDOT because I know that there's not a good opportunity there to work. So consequently, I don't, I'm ready, willing, and able, but I know that the opportunity is minimal so consequently, I take my overhead and my project managers and we bid to other work. So that's one thing that impacts those numbers. Also, I'd like to mention to Mr. Vincent Brown about trucking. Although most of the projects that, uh, that are led uh, by, and by prime contractors that are awarded to prime contractors are low bid, that doesn't mean, Mr. Brown, that your numbers have to be low. The DBE program does not say our prices have to be low. They say they have to be reasonable. Did you hear me? Reasonable. And no, we can't compete. I can't compete against uh, contractors that have been in business for three generations. I'm a first generation company. And I, that's, I believe, why those that criteria was set up. All right, here we go. Oh, man. And I'm not playing. Okay, okay, come on, kid. Yeah, my name is everybody in the community. And uh, everybody in the community gives a dang about everybody in the community. Just getting tired of all these statistics and all these stuff y'all laying at us because we don't really understand it. I'm the ordinary man. An ordinary man means something in this community. And if we're not heard, the community ain't going to never be heard. Matter of fact, we don't even have a community no more. And this pissed me off so bad I can't even speak. I'm done. Thank you, sir. 